On North Korea, we're all aware of the, uh, of the uh, provocative actions they've taken. And there have been cautions given them by nations from around the world. Uh, they clearly aren't listening. We're going to continue uh, to breed the same kind of pressure internationally when, that we've been trying to. We're going to continue to work the issue. As you know, if this goes to a military solution, it is going to be tragic on an unbelievable scale. Tough words from Defense Secretary. He is General James Mattis. He made those comments today on North Korea, saying the U.S. will continue to keep the pressure on any rogue actions by the Hermit Kingdom. Let's bring in former U.S. Army Intelligence Officer Andrew Peake. Good to see you, sir. Great to see you, Liz. What's the message here? What's the goal? Well, I think Mattis is actually playing the good cop, uh, as tough as he sounds. You know, the, the Trump administration is clearly trying to build up the diplomatic coalition to put pressure on North Korea, and that includes uh, Chinese pressure particularly. Uh, but Mattis is actually reassuring South Korea. He's saying, look, we don't want a war. We know your territory will be devastated by a war. We want you to adhere to our line to help us put pressure on North Korea, even though we don't think it's going to come to this. You know, North Korea is thought to be able to develop missiles now that could reach Seattle or Hawaii. I mean, how do you combat that? Well, I, it's extremely troubling. I think you do a couple of things. You increase your anti-missile defenses, not, not just in South Korea, but also in the United States. Uh, I think you build up your military posture in South Korea. You bring the Chinese on board to put pressure on Pyongyang not to take aggressive actions. I also think you arm our regional allies like Japan. You know, nothing will make China shut down North Korea faster than if they see Japan gaining peer-to-peer -peer competitive military hardware like the F-22 fighter that might allow Japan to compete with China in the long term uh, as a credible regional enemy. That's a really good point. Andrew, switching gears, the U.S. carried out airstrikes that targeted pro-Assad forces in Syria yesterday, posed a threat to U.S. troops and partner forces near the Jordan border. Now, General James Mattis had this to say yesterday. Listen. We're not increasing our role in the Syrian civil war, but we will defend our troops, our, and that is a coalition element made up of more than just U.S. troops. And so we'll defend ourselves if people take aggressive steps against us. And that's been a going-in policy of ours for a long time. So this happens in advance of the president making his historic Mideast trip. Uh, it's a defensive strike, a signal to Assad to keep his forces away from where U.S.-backed uh, rebels are fighting the Islamic State group. Now, what is going on here? Well, I think the president is uh, widening the red lines he set out er, tacitly earlier in the Syria conflict in April, in particular when his, he launched a tomahawk strike against Syrian uh, chemical facilities in response to that regime's chemical strike in Idlib province. I think for too long, American allies in Syria, the militias we've been arming, have been attacked with impunity by Iranian forces, by Syrian forces, even by Russian airstrikes. And so the president is saying, hey, this isn't the Obama administration anymore. If you come after our allies, we will hit you. Uh, and I think, I think Iran, I think Russia, and I think Syria are going to respect that. So let's get to your more on that, that point you just made. The president is traveling to the Middle East. How do you think the countries there will react to his trip? I think they are overwhelmingly grateful. You know, the president's message is trying to reassure them that he will not continue President Obama's policy of encouraging Iranian uh, dominance of the region, of acquiescing in the growth of American power, but he's committed to traditional American alliances in the region, like Saudi Arabia, like Jordan, like Israel. Uh, so I think they're going to be overwhelmingly supportive of his trip there, and, and I expect to see this be the, the basis of a long-term successful policy in the region.